Okay, so thank, uh, hello everyone. Thank you for joining this session. So this session, so this is title. So we introduce about the uh, mainly for H H A device and platform. Okay, so let's get started. Ah, oh, oh, Yes, this is agenda today. Uh, uh, about, uh, introduce, sorry. Uh, after introducing uh, us, we have two parts. And first half is about each device and the sensor for HI system. Then uh, introduce key, uh, about key, co key component for it. Okay. Then I'm Shimomura. Uh, I'm currently at the Sony Semiconductor Solutions when I'm working on development of HAI, HAI devices and the platform for that. And I am also working on planning and expanding strategies related to open source. Then, yes. Hi, my name is Kenji Shimizu, and I'm, I'm working in the Midokura and one of the uh, Sony Group company, and I'm in charge of uh, ecosystem expansion development. And yeah, thank you for attending this time. Okay, so first, so I will mention about the definition of each device and each AI. And you can see this document shows some each device category. Today we mean, uh, we mean it is the most left one in this picture. Each uh, device is a device that processes data, such as a smartphone, camera, or a drone. So that's uh, separate from the cloud side. And HAI is a technology that run, runs, on, uh, runs AI directly on those de H devices. For example, uh, smartphone and camera, uh, and drone, something, something, uh, uh, to process data and make decision on the fly. Okay. Then, uh, it, it, HAI has several major advantages over the cloud. One is it can perform real-time processing. It processes data on the fly without waiting for it to be sent to the cloud. So it's great for situation where you need an instance response. Okay. It also saves network bandwidth. You, uh, you use only the data you need, and you don't have to send a lot of data to the cloud. This is our definition. And next, uh, I will talk about the importance of working, uh, working with sensor in HAI. Uh, accurate and rich data from sensor is essential for HAI to function accurately. Then, then sensor detects what happens around them and capture it as data. For example, they create data about the state of the environment, movement, and temperature, and so on. This data provides a bias for AI to make decisions and affect their accuracy. In particular, the visual data provided by image sensor is multidimensional and very informative and has value that cannot be obtained with uh, other simple sensors. For example, uh, self-driving self -driving car, uh, car has a camera and LiDAR sensor, collect data to accurately understand the load and surrounding conditions and AI analyze that data to support safe driving. And sensors that acquire high dimensional 
high-frequency high high data contain rich information, making AI decision more accurate and reliable. High precision and data driven, data -driven decision enabled by the collaboration, uh, collaboration between sensor and HAI will become essential, essential in various fields in the future. And this is just the reference. So there, there, are, there are various type of image sensors that can capture everything from visible, uh, visible light to non-visible wavelengths, such as uh, IR sensors. So by capturing uh, diverse, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> diverse events as a high dimensional data, there is significant potential to solve a wide range of problems when combined with AI. And uh, in this slide, how AI use, uh, sorry, how AI use case uh, evolving to become more advanced and with that, the uh, critical role of multi-dimensional AI and multi-dimensional sensors, sensing. Uh, today, the way uh, which we envision using AI are uh, more advanced than ever, requiring rich and more diverse data. For example, in generative AI, we combine t uh, text and image and audio and so on to make more accurate and meaningful inform uh, inferences by drawing from multiple uh, sources of information. The same concept applied in HAI, also HAI. As we bring in more types of data in H devices, we also need to handle, handle, sensor, uh, handle sensor timing and data quality more carefully. This means we need an easy and effective way to manage and combine different sensors, which is why multi-modal sensors is so important. Okay. Then this slide is increasing complex, uh, complexity of edge device and AI technologies. As a Amount data, data uh, sorry, uh, uh, as the amount and type of sensor data and AI expand, and as we deploy more devices, the entire system nat naturally become, becomes more complex. We need a wide range of technologies and software uh, spanning from the cloud to each device. To simplify the setup of such as a complex system, we need com com comprehensive, comprehensive software that covers all aspects. Creating an effective AI IoT system that uh, utilizes sensors and HAI requires robust software uh, capable of efficiently integrating and maintaining those components. And for this reason, open source, support, open source support is crucial. Achieving this will depend significantly on our collaboration with the open source community. Yeah. Then, if companies want to create solution using HAI and IoT, they really need to set up a platform that contains everything from device to uh, device all the way to the cloud. And HAI system can be nearly, nearly entirely created using open source software, which allows for flexibility and cost effectiveness. To simplify the development of edge devices, we can package 
the necessary elements into an edge system framework. Then the key components of each device include AI, AI control and sensor management and edge application. So application and edge AI are typically loadable, enabling various use cases to be easily uh, implemented. By keeping those elements, uh, by keeping those elements open source, we can enhance the usability of HAI and promote its wide widespread adoption. Okay. Then uh, we believe. Uh, Then we believe those four, com four components to be essential for the device side of the AI IoT system. Uh, one is a life cycle management, so it's one of the things. Se second is sensor control and data management. And, and third is WASM technology for security and cross-platform. Cross Fourth is HAI inference. So in the next uh, his part, we will introduce them in a bit more detail. Okay, so I pass Shinza. Okay, oh, okay. Hi, and I just want to start from the defining a pain point. So what have been a technical pain point in the field of HAI and IoT? and sensor solutions. So yeah, uh, while there is a many, but uh, we want to uh, focus in on the technical pain point described, described uh, as follows. So one is a depo development process. So for uh, this kind of tiny devices and embedded software development, so it is kind of difficult. We, want to, we need to uh, use a C or C++ to optimize for the underlying hardware specifications. And, it, and uh, this kind of IoT device is uh, implemented, implemented and deployed wi uh, widely in the field, distributed in the field. So it is kind of difficult to uh, modify the application after deployment. And the most crucial, crucial part I want to emphasize in this presentation is the uh, vulnerabilities. So because uh, the device specification or software stack varies easily depending on the user's environment and user's requirement. So it means uh, some IoT devices need an ARM processor or RISC-V, x86 or other processor. Also, uh, operating systems are also fragmented. So someone, uh, some devices use uh, Linux or some devices use uh, NATX or free autos or something like that. So there is a lot of real-time OS in the embedded world. And also security and safety and security. So it means uh, RT OS, real-time OS for this kind of tiny devices, not designed to uh, multiple users to use uh, resources by, uh, by uh, shared basis. So, what we can do to overcome this pain point? So we're gonna uh, introduce, uh, by utilizing uh, WASM, with WASMB technologies. So we want to introduce um, WASM-based orchestration-capable application runtime for resource-constrained device. So by using that, we, we want to overcome the pain point. So this is just uh, one of the vision I have for the future computing world. And up to now, so a lot of virtualization technology have evolved across uh, multiple domains, including uh, uh, desktop virtualizations to uh, server-side virtualization, involving a hypervisor-based uh, virtual machine or container-based uh, virtualizations with uh, uh, orchestration like uh, Kubernetes. 
but uh, such a technologies is uh, it is uh, difficult to achieve end-to-end uh, -end virtualization, including uh, IoT devices, because uh, because of the resource constraint, and uh, it is not capable of uh, uh, container uh, container functionality like uh, using uh, Linux uh, network namespace or other things. So it's kind of difficult. So if you want to apply uh, virtualization to uh, IoT devices, we uh, we want to apply uh, web assembly technologies, which is uh, mostly developed in the web, uh, running a native, native application in the browser side. Browser side. But uh, uh, recently, it's getting hot to apply a web assembly to uh, IoT devices. So yeah, we envision this kind of computing world. And the web assembly can be backed, uh, back to the cloud side or other uh, edge, data center edge side. So there is some related project to take advantage of WebAssembly. So one is a Linux Foundation Edge Oakley project. Uh, it's a, this, this year it is a officially announced uh, Linux Foundation Edge project, which uh, uses uh, WebAssembly as a runtime for or Zephyr operating system and uh, this kind uh, on the resource constrained devices. And other thing is uh, Wasm Cloud. It's uh, hosted on the Shen Chef. Yep. Okay. And uh, another important software component for us as a sensor company, so is a sense code. It is a sense code is a framework library for developing uh, sensing applications. So by using it, uh, we can. Uh, create uh, it provide a unified API to access to a uh, lot of kind of sensor devices, and as a sensor company, so we have a lot of accumulated know-how to address uh, sensor devices and have have a common functionalities to be uh, implemented in the libraries. So by uh, providing it, so we want to accelerate a lot of open source developers to create a sensor database applications. And the spec of the uh, sense code. So it's supporting uh, multiple languages, including uh, C, C++, Python, JavaScript, Java, and C Sharp. And user can integrate uh, custom sensing functions in sense code as SPL and PPL. SPL stands for uh, sensing processing layer. And PPL stands for perception processing layer. And it also supports uh, multiple platform, including uh, Windows, Linux, and Android. Yeah. It is also, also uh, to be released at uh, open source, but uh, today it's not available. It is plan planned right now. OK. Then let's move to the open source uh, component using uh, our HAI IoT platform. ITRIOS, ITRIOS, A I T R I O S, is a sensing platform provided by uh, Sony Semiconductor Solutions and enabling uh, HAI IoT solutions that leverage Sony's AI capable sensors. But uh, this is an open source summit, so uh, because uh, it is a commercial service, so we won't go uh, into further details here. But uh, we recently launched uh, ITRIOS local edition. And through this development of local edition, so we have started to release the software component involved, involved in this uh, project as an open source. Then this is uh, what uh, ITRIOS local edition provides. It's provide an HAI development uh, environment that is easy to start with locally, and if you want, you can uh, scale out to use a cloud-based, uh, more large-scale uh, sensing solutions IoT platform. I mean, the, in the left side box, so you can, uh, so it is uh, kind of easy for open source developers to start with. So it's uh, based on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, flexible and high, uh, uh, sorry, high, uh, flexible and general purpose 
platform. And you can start with uh, creating uh, AGI applications using uh, this kind of flexible platform with uh, our uh, Sony's AI uh, sensing, uh, AI sensor. And with, uh, without uh, any internet connectivity like uh, cloud-based uh, systems. But if you want, you can switch to the uh, right, side, right side box. It is a uh, provider Largest, more large scale expansion with a connected environment based on the cloud service. And you can also use uh, this kind of small white box, like uh, it's an AI camera. It is really small size and uh, with uh, lower power consumptions and lower capability or lower processing power. Then you move to the open source project involved in this uh, system. There is a four open source project. One is a local consoles, which is available today. It's one of the tools for deploying uh, edge applications and AI model to each devices. Then managing the uh, applications and AI model, uh, their life cycle and monitoring uh, telemetry data, metadata generated, on, generated from the device. And ByteHype, it's a tentative name, tentative name and to be released. It's a lightweight, lightweight runtime similar to Container D, but designed for the uh, tiny edge. It is running on the device side. Yeah. And sense code, it is also to be released as an open source. But uh, it's uh, running on the uh, device side as well and to access to the sensor data. In HAP SDK, it's uh, for uh, developer's laptop. You can create uh, WebAssembly based uh, edge applications or Python based app edge applications as well in the future. And yeah, you can easily create uh, edge application. It's a post processing application to uh, like a uh, to format the output of an image sensor or uh, send the telemetry data to the cloud or something like that. This is our project, uh, open source project plan. And more detailed here, but uh, yeah. I've already uh, explained the uh, overview of a local console, but uh, so I'll skip the details specification here, but uh, we want to, we actually have this set up in our showcase booth showcase booth number, number one. So you can uh, come to the, our booth and uh, uh, please look at, uh, look at the demonstrations, how, what the, uh, the experience, developer's experience, experience is like. And uh, local console in the spectra connected to the edge devices. And, and uh, so firstly, so it established an MQTT connections between them to get ready for the data retriever. And it, through the local console, the so user can deploy a uh, WebAssembly uh, module, WebAssembly applications that post-process and AI inference data. So it's, it's uh, Python's, Python is also to be, uh, to be supported in the future. And it's also deploy an AI model that fit to the size of a uh, memory size of edge devices. And uh, finally, it can start and stop the sending, uh, receiving uh, streaming data of uh, image or sensor telemetry, telemetry data. And it can also set the region of interest. Yeah. And uh, after that, from the device, so the developer can retrieve uh, telemetry data. It is uh, uh, after formatted the data uh, in the post process uh, was a module, and it is sent via MQTT messages. And it's also uh, receive a stream of images via HTTP. So you can configure the uh, sensor, uh, you can configure the edge device to uh, to retrieve a uh, image and the telemetry data or only telemetry data to suppress the uh, retrieving a large volume of uh, data or to keep the privacy data on the only the device side. 
So you have to you have, you have to worry about the uh, privacy data go to the go going through the cloud side by using this uh, sensor data. And other open source project is uh, SDK. So each application SDK is uh, another component we planned. It, it is to be released as soon as possible. And uh, so, yeah, it's uh, creating, it supports uh, developers to, to create an uh, edge application using a web assembly for edge. And yeah, it's enabled uh, post processing of data acquired from sensors on devices. And we should really mention about the commercial service on the left side. So it's also sub, uh, support uh, WASM applications and AI models generated by uh, our commercial service, which is called uh, Local Studio. It is a AI training tool. AI, uh, PC based AI training tool provided as a part of ITRES local editions. So it allows users to create an AI model for classification, object detection, without a need for advanced AI knowledge. And it can, it can also generate uh, web assembly based applications to utilize the AI model. Yeah, so then, uh, yeah, the AI model is already optimized to fit to the, uh, this uh, uh, sensor integrated AI functionalities on the side by side. Okay, so local console is already available as an open source uh, from the GitHub repository over here. And yeah, local console is uh, implemented in Python. Then you can clone it. Uh, in, you can just clone it, and uh, you can imp uh, implement this uh, local console in the Python's virtual environment VM. Or um, you can also create a wheel file to make an archive. And currently, and un unfortunately. Local console is uh, only compatible with uh, AI camera for iTrios, but uh, we are planning to expand the uh, support for Raspberry Pi general purpose AI platform, uh, general purpose platform we uh, used with uh, AI camera. Yeah. Okay. So as Shimomura mentioned that uh, uh, we need to collaborate with uh, open source community developers to support uh, various kind of uh, sensor data, uh, sensor and uh, various, kind, various kind of IoT devices. It is really fragmented, so we need uh, your uh, help to create, uh, to expand the ecosystem for HAI IoT solutions. So this is just an example for what uh, I want to do uh, <laughs> is collaboration with uh, communities. So for, we want to make it easy to create an AI application for edge devices. So we want to, we want to support for uh, modern unsupported high level languages and user friendly APIs. And we want to even uh, reach, cro reach correction of use cases and sample applications. For local consoles, so for who want to simplify the management and visualization of a uh, lot of edge devices and edge applications. So we want to uh, expand uh, manageable edge devices and applications. And for each side, so for who want to leverage not only specific image sensor, but also use a variety of sensors and edge devices with uh, image sensors. So we want to develop us to port the open sourced agent software by type agent to various uh, out of edge devices. And we want to sense code to support a wide range of sensor data. Yeah, if it is not uh, supported by the native sense code. Okay. Okay, so actually, uh, we uh, 
actively working with the uh, open source communities. So this is a uh, one example. Uh, our collaboration with the uh, CNCJ organizer to plan a uh, WASM Japan meetup, which is already held in the Sony Osaka building. And it is uh, already finished, but uh, this event covers uh, discussion on web assembly, not only for uh, each side, but also uh, cloud side or other use cases, and also include uh, inductory content for web assemblies. Yep. Okay, this is a summary of this presentation. So, uh, in Edge AI, IoT, and sensor network technologies, diverse configuration exists for each users. It's essential to break through the device stack fragmentation. Because, because of the diversity, collaboration with open source communities is even more crucial than with uh, cloud, cloud technologies. And we believe uh, WebAssembly for Edge would be uh, one, key, one key component to make this possible. And we are introducing an open source project for end-to-end -end use in the world of HAI, IoT, and sensor network technologies. The first step is a local console. So please uh, be sure to check and stay tuned for update on our open source project. OK, thank you. This is the uh, end of my presentation. So if you have any questions, please feel free to. Yep. <laughs> Okay, so uh, we have a live demonstration in Sony booth, uh, booth number sharp one, so please come to our booth and uh, please see what it's like, and I hope that uh, a lot of developers can access to the, our new open source project. Thank you so much.